What's up everybody, my name is Chris, and today in this video I want to talk about a way of how you can turn your Canon EOS R basically into a R3 slash 1DX kind of like camera for portraiture shooting, vertical shooting, and nowadays all that is all the more important with social media, Instagram, and the likes for video and photography. But before we talk about all the bells and whistles, let's jump into the unboxing and of course also the body overview of what this can bring you and how it works. Now the packaging on this is really simple. You have just the name of the product on there and a bit of a picture here on the side. And unboxing it, I'm not actually sure if this is the original inside because I got this used. Now there's a bit of cardboard or paper so that it's not bouncing around. And then we have the battery grip as well as a user guide. However, I'm not gonna use the user guide because that is going to not be necessary. And with that, we already have the grip right here. Now, something I immediately noticed is that it feels solidly built. It feels really good in the hand. However, it also feels relatively chunky. But for now, let's talk about the details of this. First of all, we have a screwing locking mechanism. So this is actually taking the screw that goes down into the tripod mount. Then there are two little spikes right there and there so that it goes in the right direction. And of course, it protects the connector right here so that all the features are available and this connector is not broken in some way. Then on the back, we additionally have charging indicators and we'll have to talk about those specifically. We have the AF on button. We have a little star sign for the AE locking and stuff like that. The focus selector, the wheel here, and honestly, this feels better than the normal mode dial, or at least also the positioning is nicer for the thumb. Then on the side here, we have the on off feature, and this is not actually turning on or off the camera. It is just simply turning on and off all the buttons here on the grip so that you can decide whether you want to have these active or not. Then we also have the USB-C charging port right here on the grip. That is for charging the batteries inside here. And you have a, another wheel right here. You have the multi-function button right there. And of course, the shutter button is there as well. Now, if you look at the front, you have the Canon logo. And then down here, you have another port. And this seems to be a bit of a old school uh, flash connector, or at least that's what I'm guessing it is. Uh, I have not really had any need for that in a very long time. On the bottom of the grip, you have a screw for, of course, a tripod plate, and you have another mounting position for, for example, a strap. And honestly, that strap mounting position is really interesting. I'm gonna definitely show you that, how that performs and how it looks, and also how it handles the camera. Then on the last side, we have the opening port for the battery compartment. And of course, you can put in two batteries into the grip and both of those can then be used by the camera, essentially doubling the amount of time you can film or shoot photographs. The last thing I wanna mention is that this part right here, which actually goes into the battery compartment for the uh, electricity connection, essentially, that is also the place where you can store the battery door right here because of course you don't need that or you cannot have that mounted on the camera while you have this attached. So you can store the battery door right here and then there's another little place right there where you can store the cap that usually protects the port where this goes in so that both of those things are stored inside the camera and cannot be lost while you are using the battery grip and you can take it off at any moment whilst basically using this. And when you do take it off, you can immediately put both of those caps back onto your camera so that it is nice and protected. But with that, I think it's time to put this onto the camera so that we can see how it looks and also how it's handling. Now to mount the battery grip, of course, I first have to take off the bottom plate right here. In this case, I have no longer mounted a standard Peak Design plate here, which is usually the thing that I mount there. But instead, I have a standard Arca Swift compatible one that I actually can unscrew with my fingers because usually now I want to put a Arca Swift one, which is also Peak Design compatible on the bottom of the battery grip. And we'll do that in a moment. 
But then also I want to be able to have something on the camera when I don't want to have this on. So I have this as a replacement that I can screw on whenever I take this one off. And with that, we can continue here. We can open the battery door, take the battery out. This one here is a original. Then I can undo the little flap here by pushing this up and then doing this off. And that's really easy to do. And then we of course also have to take off the little protective piece right there. And then we have all of those pieces here. And as I've mentioned, you can now put these into the battery grip for storage. The place is right in here, as I've mentioned, and you can just push it in there and then it clips in like so and is nicely protected. To take it out again, you simply just do it as if you were opening the battery compartment and you can take it out immediately. And then the other little cap can go right in there as well. And that way you have both of these nicely stored away and they cannot get lost. And now we can undo this orange cap as well. I found actually quite nicely that this actually kind of holds in place right there. So you can also put these kind of together and they don't get lost as well. And now we can simply just push this into the bottom of the camera, lock it in and just screw that. And that of course basically just tightens a little bit of a, a tripod screw into the bottom of the camera. And just like that, we now have the Canon EOS R with a battery grip at the bottom and can also shoot in vertical format with a additional shutter button. But of course, we also need some batteries in here. And for that, we have to go back here, open the battery compartment. There's a little flap that comes out, turn that over, pull it out, and then we have that in our hands. And in this case, I'm gonna just put into off-brand ones. These are from Baxter and I got those from Amazon. And now we have those mounted in here. If you're wondering what those numbers are, I basically like to label the batteries as in when I got them so that I know which batteries are really, really old and which may need replacing. But now with these mounted in there, we can basically just push this into the body, twist this again, close the lock, and now the batteries are in there. You can see a little light co up in the indicator on the back of the camera. And now I can turn on the camera. In this case, I wanna switch into photo mode. Now again, here on the side, you will find a on off switch. And this is not changing whether or not the camera is turned on. It simply just decides whether or not the buttons here on the back of the camera should be active. So for example, right now, if I turn this off and I hit the shutter button on the grip here down at the bottom, there is nothing happening. However, if I turn this to the on position and I hit the shutter button, you can see something changes on the screen. And that of course would be the metering mode while holding the shutter button for a moment. And then I take a photo and there we have a photo taken with the shutter button right here for vertical shooting. Now I got this mainly because nowadays we are doing so much vertical shooting for Instagram and the likes. And I even have heard from people that are doing a lot of photography that if you are always shooting like this, or if you're always shooting like this, that can actually also turn into shoulder pain over long periods of time. Now this here should alleviate that because it makes it so much nicer and easier to hold the camera. However, it makes the camera significantly heavier. And I'm gonna include how heavy just here in terms of showing you how much it weighs without that extra grip. And of course with the battery inside and everything mounted. And I'm also gonna include how much it weighs if you just put one battery into the grip because it is an option, you can do that. However, of course, that also kind of defeats the purpose because of course you have the option to run the camera so much longer when you put two batteries in the bottom. Now it is a significant weight gain, but maybe these features right here to be able to just adjust everything on the fly while you have the camera in your hands like this, looking through this viewfinder, having the shutter button, not having to kind of angle your hand weirdly when you're doing those Instagram shots, those vertical photography works for social media nowadays, and even the video work as well, because now this makes the camera so much more stable or easier to hold when you are actually filming handheld. And maybe, just maybe, this is me getting used to this form factor 
before at some point getting a EOS R1 or R3. Now I haven't used this all too much in the last week since it arrived. However, I am going to use it a lot in Spain and then I will also let you know whether or not this is a worthy investment and if it's worth the extra weight when you are traveling, when you are hiking and all those kind of things. One thing I already know for sure, however, is that with this mounted here, the carrying is a whole different story compared to just the camera without the extra bottom right here. And for that, I also got a couple new things and I'm gonna show you one just quickly. And that is the Peak Design Capture Clip. That is this here right there. And that of course uses this little plate on the bottom of the camera to basically slide in right there. And I'm gonna make a video specifically about this as well as the Pro Pad, which helps basically also take a bit of the weight away and have this mounted to either your shoulder when you are carrying a backpack or to something like a belt on there. Now I am going to compare these to the previous ones that I was using, the Capture Clip version 2, and I will have an extra video about that and that's gonna be linked in the description below. However, what I do want to show you is how you can use this little connection point right there and actually use something like the Peak Design strap or even your original Canon camera strap to basically transport this camera in a way that almost feels more natural and better and more ergonomically pleasing than if you just have the usual position just like this and you have your strap there and there. Now for that, of course, with the Peak Design straps, you have these little connectors right here and you'll just use that to basically put this through right there. And so I'm gonna just funnel that in there and then of course hook it through and then I can use the strap and basically just lock that in right there and on the other side as well. And then we have a setup like this. And now if I step back a couple of steps, you can see I can now put this around and I have the camera just like this. It is ready to go in the normal shooting position or if I grab it from behind, it's also ready to go from that position and I can immediately start shooting that way. And the reason why I wanted to show this is like this, the camera actually really fits nice and tight here and it just hangs there really nicely in comparison to, for example, having it like this where it always kind of hangs like that down and like this, it just is more stable. It feels really good to have this on my body with the lenses that I have right now, which are kind of heavy. So that is also something to also consider. Now, of course, I'm also going to put my Peak Design plate right here at the bottom. Now I have the old Peak Design plates, which are these big ones from the Capture Clip, the previous version. And I actually quite like that I have these because they give me a bit of a more peace of mind in terms of being wider than the new ones that you get with the Capture Clip version three. But now I can just put this in there, maybe have this somewhat center like this. And you can just, just screw this in with this, I don't know, hex screw or something like that. It makes it even more bulky when I'm now holding it like this and it's a little bit uncomfortable. However, I do want to have this to be able to put it on a tripod and I also want to have this there because I can then also use the capture clip as I've mentioned before on, for example, a backpack strap or of course my belt and that is going to be featured in the video that I'm gonna link in the description below. Now I mentioned the USB-C charging port here on the side of the grip and that of course can be used to charge both of these batteries. Sadly, you cannot use this port to power the camera. That is something that is not yet possible with the Canon EOS R. You can charge batteries that are inside here. However, there are a couple of more weird limitations. For one, if you don't have originals in there, for example, I have the Baxter batteries in here, then those are not going to be charging. You will have to have two original batteries in here or one original battery and otherwise it's not going to charge at all. Then I also found that sometimes it's a bit of a strange finicky situation. You have to plug in your cord, turn on the camera and then turn it off and then the batteries start charging. Sometimes they start charging when you just plug it in. Sometimes you have to turn the camera on, wait a couple seconds, turn it off 
and then a couple seconds later it will start charging. However, again, not if you do not have original batteries in here. This only charges the original Canon batteries and not aftermarket or third-party batteries. Now, I hope you found this interesting to check out the camera grip for the Canon EOS R, the BGE22. And I'm gonna let you know whether or not I'm gonna keep this for the long term or if it's gonna be too heavy and just not practical enough, not adding enough value and being worth carrying around. With all that said, if you have any questions about that and maybe I can feature those in the upcoming video that I will make about this, then leave those in the comment section down below. If you found this video helpful or interesting, then I would appreciate a thumbs up or a super thanks. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. See you in the next video and ciao, ciao.